eight months ago now, I reviewed the GT730, which became instantly popular. By the way, there's a new version by MSI. It's white, has like a white PCB and a little black cooler. It's the same exact thing as this. I'm a bit jealous because that looks a lot better than this thing. But eight months ago, I reviewed the GT730, and that became instantly popular due to the lack of other reviews, mainly because fancy, well-known reviewers tend to look at the enthusiast side of things, while me, being an average human, I don't really have hundreds upon hundreds of dollars to spend on new hardware. And that's where this comes in. The brand spanking new NVIDIA GeForce GT710. This specific version is from Gigabyte that I got for about $50. I know, I know, I only buy from MSI. However, they were taking literally forever to get theirs out. And the version they did have out had no fan. It was just passively cooled. And you know, whatever card I got, I was going to be overclocking. My next option was this pancake looking one from EVGA because honestly it just looked different and I really wanted that, but it wasn't out yet. So I saw this one and decided, you know, Gigabyte is a great brand and I should buy from them more often. However, if there's an MSI equivalent out, I will usually almost always go with that. The box is really thin, only about one inch thick. And right inside you can find two low profile brackets, low profile brackets, in case you are you want to get rid of the VGA, which I don't blame you, or you're installing this card into your low profile case, which that'll also, you can also come in handy in. And then this anti-static bag carrying the GT710, and underneath some cardboard you can find a easy setup guide and a CD from Core. Actually, I have it right here. So I have the quick guide right here. Not gonna open it, never looked at it before. Uh, and a Gigabyte CD, but I always, as well, always, 100% always recommend that you download the latest drivers off GeForce.com and if need be, Gigabyte software off their website. However, for overclocking utilities and such, I always use MSI Afterburner. It's just, it works very well with all products. So, let's go to the card, shall we? So the first thing you'll probably notice is this card is freaking tiny. Compared to the GT730, yeah, it's pretty small, and don't even get me started what it looks like compared to a GTX 970. Or at least the MSI Twin Frozer cooler. So before removing them, which you probably will if you plan on using the card, there's the black rubber things that protect the PCI Express connector, as well as the VGA, HDMI, and DVI slots, which are nice. So then there's a 45 millimeter fan on top of a little black heat sink, which is very sleek looking, and it will keep the card very, very cool. Also, uh, should be noted, the PCB is black, matte black. Uh, also worth mentioning, the HDMI is, uh, the HDMI port in there is gold plated. And uh, what I can get from that is it supports full HD. So the GK208 core underneath this heat sink is actually of the aging Kepler architecture, not something from Maxwell like you might expect. And it's clocked at 954 megahertz. So this would actually apply to all, or at least most, GT710s because that is the base clock speed for the 710, and as well as they don't fact really factory overclock these uh, lower end cards. You know I'm going to be overclocking to at least one gigahertz with this thing. Probably more. There's also 192 crude cores, which sounds all right until you compare it to the GT730, which has 384 crude cores. And that makes this sound crappy until you get to the GT610, which only has 96 CUDA cores. So this thing, the 710 versus the GT620, most likely much faster than this thing. The 10 can either come with one or two gigabytes of video memory. This is the two gigabyte version at the slower DDR3 standard clocked at 1800 megahertz on the 64-bit memory interface, just like its bigger brother, the GT730. In terms of features, this card supports DirectX 12, adaptive V-Sync, as well as PhysX and CUDA, obviously, and its PCI Express connector is at the 16x bandwidth, uh, actually only the 14.4 um, gigabytes per second 2.0 bandwidth, not yet 3.0. Um, a lot of the lower end, lower end cards are still at 2.0. Also, a lot of comments I got on um, really any video card video I have is, I have this power supply, will it work? Well. It recommends a minimum of a 300 watt power supply, however, on GeForce.com, um, it says its power is only 19 watts, so that would depend on the rest of your system. Again, this card has V 
VGA, HDMI, and DVI, allowing a max of three displays. And the VGA's max resolution is, uh, I might have to look over here for a sec, sorry, 2048 by 1536. And this card can support right over 1440p at 2560 by 1600 at 60 hertz and 4K at 30 hertz. So that's really cool that this little card could handle 4K, but of course at 30 hertz and not in gaming, mind you. So a lot of the hype that's surrounding this card is saying that it's 10 times faster than integrated graphics, which might, I don't know, might be one of the reasons why you're here is thinking you should upgrade from your integrated graphics. So I'll be testing this claim with my i5-4670K at 3.7 gigahertz. I did that for a reason and then forgot the reason. So now it's at 3.7 gigahertz, even though, whatever, who cares? Um, <clears throat> Testing and testing with that, it's Intel HD integrated 4600 graphics to see just how legit that claim is. The funny thing is, is on the box it says the same thing, but there's a little tiny star and the star reads video editing, video editing as measured by ba uh, Basemark CL Benchmark. So, um, probably not gaming performance, it's gonna be, um, 10 times faster. So for the test bench, I'll be running the GT710, obviously, and this overclocked to 120 megahertz on both the core clock and the memory clock. So, and then you can do simple math to figure out that this thing is running at um, 1074 megahertz on the core and um, 1920 megahertz on the memory. And I'll be using eight gigabytes of 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM, as well as the i5 I talked about earlier. Now obviously the card didn't do very well, nor did I even expect it to do so. So now we have some lighter titles to test, because this card is most likely for if you don't play high-end games and you just want to play Minecraft or whatever, or your processor doesn't even come with integrated graphics, which is probably a good point. Thing is, Nvidia does not promote or advertise these as gaming cards anyway, so they aren't really meant to be treated as such, but uh, who cares, we're gonna, we're gonna game with them anyway. So now let's take a look at games like uh, like Minecraft, Super Meat Boy, Delver, CSGO, just really light games. And uh, all I can say is this card did great in all scenarios here. Six Pulled 60 FPS in like every really light game I tested. But on uh, CSGO Medium and under P, I thought I'd point this uh, little graph out. Basically the integrated Intel graphics again beat out the 710. Um, even when overclocked and the 730 again ran away with it. Ran away with the victory, yep. So obviously in my findings, I wanted to see if this is really 10 times faster than integrated graphics. And I didn't test synthetic benchmarks, which it probably looks at because I don't care what those say. I want to look at real world stuff like gaming and me being a gamer, I want to know how it works. And not only is it on par or worse than Intel's 4600 graphics, Intel, before Iris Pro, mind you, is known for having bad graphics compared to AMD. So what made me excited about this card is that it didn't just outperform Intel's graphics, but if it were to perform or at least be on par with um, like AMD's integrated R5 or R7 graphics. This card did not amaze me. It'll stay on my shelf, and the only reason to buy this that I can see from you, the consumer standpoint, is if your processor, in a couple examples, does not have onboard graphics and you're not looking to game heavily. So remember, it did well on smaller titles. So an Athlon X4860K, um, an FX, you know, 8350, 6400, or 4130, or a, like an i7 5820K, or whatever doesn't have integrated graphics. So if you're looking to do more CPU demanding tasks rather than uh, rather than uh, graphically demanding tasks, it's it's much more efficient as well. It's not as power hungry as lower end cards you can look on eBay and say, well, there's cheaper cards here for than 50 bucks or whatever, but this is much more efficient. It's much lower powered. You can still run three displays or whatever you're... So that's all I have to say about this card. So you guys, please leave suggestions on what you, how, how you want me to utilize this card in the future because I've got nothing. 
If you enjoyed, you can leave a like on this video as well as uh, consider subscribing to be informed when my next video comes out next week. So also feel free to tell me or ask me anything you'd like in the comments. I've been thinking of uh, maybe doing a Q&A soon because I'm original. And if you're still bored, I have a couple videos I think you might like and have a good day.